And like, don't go like telling me like, oh, it's because you spend too much time on the internet or oh, it's because you work remote. Like don't, no, go away. What if she did ghost me, bro? Like that's crazy. <laughs> when I have a person and like, I appreciate like so much, I appreciate the people that do show up for me, you know, it's starting to get a little bit debilitating and it's, 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 it's sad and it's stressful and it's overwhelming and I don't like it. I don't like it at all, but. I have a little story for you guys. But first, welcome back to the podcast. This is Miriam from the Becoming Miriam Podcast. Woo! If you're new here, this podcast is a personal podcast, a personal journey to becoming Miriam, hopefully one day, a version of myself that I can be happy with. Um, so yeah, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I wanted to tell a little story. I got a flat tire the other day. I got a flat tire the other day. And, and I fell apart. Because I know how to change a flat tire. Like, I've, I've literally practiced it just to make sure that I know how to change a flat tire, right? So I know how to, like, I, sh I, sh I should have been fine. Thankfully, like, you know, it wasn't like a s scary thing. Like, and it was also, I, I'm in the Sioux City. I hit the world's biggest pothole. But it wasn't even a pothole. It was like the whole, like a whole chunk of the street was missing. And it was nighttime and I'm already blind, you know. So, yeah, I hit the world's biggest pothole. And it was like, I felt like it was a bad, like I felt, oh, I didn't like the way that felt. And I was like, and so I'm like, you know, driving a little bit and I'm like, turn, you know, turn the music off to make sure I could, you know, hear. And then like something just felt weird. Like something, I just, it just felt off. And then, you know, like five seconds, 10 seconds later, my like tire pressure marker comes on and I was like, damn it. Yeah. Like that popped my tire. And so I like was able, you know, it was nighttime, there was very little traffic, like I was, you know, fine, and I pulled off into a gas station, and I, obviously I knew I had a flat tire, and then I, like, froze, and I just, like, had so much anxiety, and then I had a panic attack after that, you know, like, at first I was, like, like, I couldn't get out of my car to look at my tire, because, I was just really, like, I was just, like, in a frozen state. Like, it was really weird. It was, it was not a good time. So I was just, like, frozen, and I was just, like, I can't, like, I couldn't get out. And then, and then I had a panic attack because I was, like, what do I do? Because, at the, and, like, I had a panic, like, I, I sat there for, like, almost an hour. Just, like, I didn't know what to do. And that's, like, the most ridiculous thing. And so what I want to talk about more than, like, the flat tire is, like, where did my like when did my anxiety get so bad that like I just like and it, it specifically I want to say it's like my social anxiety because I don't think I would have had a problem getting out of my car and looking at my tire and honestly changing my tire if I knew that I would just be like alone to do it um but I wasn't I was at a gas station that had you know people coming and going and yeah, so because there was people out, that's what, like, for, like messed me up. Because if I have the freedom and the peace to just, like, figure it out, like, I would have figured it out. Like, but I, in my mind, I couldn't get, I, I didn't want to get out and then have somebody, like, come up to me, you know? Like, I'm afraid of people. Like, when did I become afraid of people, you know? And so I, I just, it was a little wake-up call that, like, my social anxiety has, like, gotten very, very at a hand and very bad and I don't I just I don't know why I don't like I just it's so bad it's so bad because again I know how to change a tire I, I have everything I need I could have done it but I was just so anxious about the people that were you know around the gas station that I couldn't I couldn't even get out to look at it like I just I wait, and eventually I did get out and look at my tire, obviously. Um, but I had, to, like, I just waited until there was as little people as possible. And then I would get so mad because then it would, like, clear out, and I'd be like, okay, cool, there's nobody. And then, boom, a car would show up, and I'm like, no, like, go away. Like, if I just, like, was alone in the world, you know, like, obviously not, like, fully alone in the world because then I would get, like, even more sad and lonely. But, like, if I just, like, could be alone whenever I wanted to be alone, like, that would be great. Um because it's, it's just, it's gotten really bad, like, with other things, too, like, I know, like, it's pretty natural for people to have, like, gym anxiety, you know, like, it's, it's a scary thing, especially getting back into, into working out, and getting back, like, kind of starting over, and, like, being, like, 
going back to being like a beginner in the gym. Um, like I, I understand that that's like pretty common and pretty natural. And it also drives me crazy because it's like, I want to go and like get back into fitness. I want to focus on my health again. I want to go to the gym. I want to go back to dance. I want to do like, I want to do a lot of things, but I get like, my anxiety just takes over and it's like consuming that. Like I can't because I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but it was a really bad time when I got this flat tire. Cause again, like I just sat there for almost an hour, like not, cause I, I, I was really torn on like, do I try to call somebody to like come and help me or do I just do it by myself? Cause again, I know how to do it. I can do it by myself. So I didn't want to, and then, and then the other thing too, is like, I just didn't want to bother anybody. Like I didn't, I don't like, I didn't, I don't have like, who do I call? Like, you know, I don't, I'm going to annoy somebody. Like someone's going to have to go out of their way to help me. Like, I'm going to be bothering them. I'm going to, like, I'm going to inconvenience them. Like, I didn't want, like, that on its own was also, like, a really big, like, push. That that on its own is kind of what pushed me into, like, the panic attack. Um, because then I did start, like, reaching out when I realized, like, okay, I've been here for, like, an hour. Like, I can't, I can't just, you know, like, I I need I need some help, obviously. And so I, I reached out, like, I, I reached out to one of my cousins who wasn't able to, to come and help, which is, you know, fine. And I texted some, to some friends that I thought like, you know, that kind of lived not super far, like with hopes that maybe they would be around and it wouldn't be as much of an inconvenience because they're kind of close by. Um, and yeah, I had no luck, no luck there, which again is fine. Obviously it was a last minute thing. I didn't mean to blow out my tire. <laughs> um, but so yeah, it, it was fine. And then um, eventually I called another one of my cousins and I think because, and I have issues, right? Like we all know this, I have mental issues. And so it's not like I felt rejected. Like the, the easiest way to kind of explain a little bit of kind of how I felt maybe is to say the word rejected, but I didn't feel rejected. But like, I already, I think it's just like, I already had a really hard time reaching out to somebody, you know, like I didn't want, I don't like to ask for, for things like in ser like for serious things like I don't like to actually ask for things like I'll jokingly like say things but like to actually ask someone for help like when I actually need help is very difficult to me for me and so from I think the anxiety and like the anxiety of like I don't want to bother this person I don't want to be an inconvenience like how annoying and then like overcoming that to finally like send the message and like ask and then them not being available. And then it's like, oh my gosh, like, it, cause again, I don't, I, it's not rejection, but like, cause they didn't, it's not, I don't know. They were busy, you know, like one of them was at work and like one of them wasn't close, wasn't, wasn't close by. Like they're fine. Like, you know, it's fine. But I don't know if it was just like the overwhelming, like climb of the anxiety to like actually ask and then to like have no luck. So then I have to do it again for two, two more people and still just con constantly like not have luck and then finally when I when I called my cousin my other cousin um who was further away so then I felt even worse like I called him and then I just couldn't stop crying and I felt like such a loser because I'm like dude I'm fine like I know I'm crying right now but like I'm fine I just I'm having a panic attack it's like just ignore me <laughs> and so then um uh, finally I told him and like he was like yeah I'll be like I'll be I'll be out there in in a little bit because Again, he lived, he was a little bit further away, so it did take him a little bit longer. So it was another like 30 minutes until he got to me, probably. Um, and I just like cried like the whole time. And ugh, it was just, it was just such a bad time, dude. It was so bad. And like, I feel, again, like it, it feels ridiculous to like, it feels ridiculous. Like, I feel ridiculous because again, it was not a bad like thing. I, I was fine. I was like safe. Like, I, everything was fine. And here I am like having a full blown panic attack, like just crying my eyes out. Like ugh, it was, ugh, it was the worst. It was so bad, man. It sucked. Um, yeah. But eventually he showed up and like super easy, changed my tire. And like, as soon as I got out of my car with him there, I felt fine. Like I didn't, I no longer felt anxious. It's just like having that like safety net, I guess, of like someone there with me. And it's like, I don't know, like, I don't think it's like a, like, I don't think I was scared. Um, 
like it wasn't like I was in like a super super bad like part part of town. Like I mean, it wasn't like the the nice like it wasn't like one of the nice nice gas like the newer you know. But it wasn't like I was fine. Like I didn't feel scared. I don't I don't think I don't know. You know I don't know. But just yeah. Again, as soon as he got there, once I saw him, like I was able to get out of my car and I was like fine and like I I didn't feel like it was fine. So what is it about like being alone? Like, am I scared? Like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know why, but I just have realized that like my social anxiety has gotten like so bad where it's like that, that felt debilitating where like, I just like, why? Like there was no, I could have, if I, if I didn't have this, this social anxiety and if I was able to just get out of my car and like change my tire, I would have been probably done within like, done and like back on like going home within like, 20 minutes you know like it would have been fine and instead I ended up being there for like an hour and a half because of my social anxiety and because of my panic attack and like it felt it felt ridiculous and again like I know this example and this little story is is about the tire but the gym like freaks me out I have a hard hard time going back to the gym and like it's it's frustrating too because it's like I no, I've, I've been into fitness in the past. Like I know how to properly work out. I know how to, I, ha I know how to have good form. I know how to work out. I know how to be healthy, but getting there and being there by myself is very much a struggle. And, um, I've had moments, like I've had times where I would like be able to like go and work out with someone and like, not necessarily like I, j it's just being there. Like we don't, I would go to the gym with, with this friend that I had and we wouldn't even talk to each other, but we would just, you know, work, I would work out and in, work into his sets and I would just, we would just do our workouts and just be there and like literally not even say a word to each other. So it's like, we're still kind of working out on our own, but it's just ha having someone that I feel safe, like that I know and like makes me feel like safe and secure and then I'm fine. And then it's like, I, if I'm like, again, with a person and like out and about and in the world, I like am fine and I'm in a silly goofy mood and I'm talkative and I'm like, you know, as soon as I'm by myself, I'm like, and I just want to hide and I just want to like go off into the corner and like not be seen. And it's, it's, I don't know how to like make it better because there's like, there's so much, like I, t I talk about it all the time. Like there's so much that I would like to do and that I want to do. And I don't have people here to do it with like the people that, are into some of the same things that I'm into. None of them live by me. And so then I just don't do it because like I, like for, for example, another example, just like the content creation side of things. Like I really, I love the podcast. I really want to get into more creation and more like just more fun things. Like I've been, I've wanted to have a YouTube channel since I was in high school and like, I'm like a thousand years old now, you know? So like things like that, it's like, I would love to, and I want to this year is really focus on that and start filming more content and start, you know, doing vlogs and start doing all these things. And it's like, I, I go out to, you know, an event like the Pokemon when I went to the Sinnoh tour, like that is like the perfect place to go and, and do a vlog and to film content and to just sh share that with, with people. And a lot of people that are there are doing that. But then I get there and I'm like, and like, I wasn't like, I wasn't alone. Like I was with my brothers, but it's different to also like, I don't know. It's like, they, they are not into this. Like they don't care about vlogging. Like, and so I wish I had people close by that like were into the same thing and like would like would you know do it we could do it together type of thing and it's like I don't and so instead I need to figure out how to do it by myself but I'm like terrified of the world and so it holds me back from like all these different things and I, I really don't know like I don't know also if it's like I, I kind of feel like maybe a part of it is like a confidence thing and it's just like I don't know my insecurities. I'm not confident with myself and like that on its own. Like I, I truly, and, and, and not just confidence in like my appearance type of thing. Like that's not what I mean. But like, for example, going back to the tire story, the confidence of like, I've, I have done it before and I do know how to do it, but like, I'm not an expert, you know, like I practiced it one time. Like I know the steps, but I'm not an expert. And so like, I don't have the confidence in myself. Like I have the, um, 
how do I explain this? I have the confidence that I can do it, right? Like I can get it done, but I don't have the confidence that like I can do it seamlessly first try, like no problems, you know? And so that s tiny sliver of like, I might forget a step that I'll have to like look it up or I might mess, you know, like I might do it wrong at first. Like I might look dumb, right? Like type of thing. And so it's like, if, if someone comes up to me and like sees me doing it wrong, like that con like that part like that's the disconnect that I think I struggle with where it's like I don't I'm I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think it on I also think it's a little bit like the all or nothing thinking again, where it's like I either need to be like an expert and be good at something or like I'm, I'm an embarrassing failure, you know? And so I don't know if like that part of might be playing into it. It probably is, because I feel like the all or nothing thinking like literally plays into everything and it's the worst. But yeah, so, because again, if I had the freedom to just, like, I was there by myself, empty, no one, like, I can guarantee nobody's going to be, like, around, and no one's going to see me, and, like, I had the freedom to just, like, explore and and try it by myself, then I feel like I wouldn't have a problem with it, but it's as soon as, like, the social part comes in, where it's, like, as soon as there's a possibility that someone's going to look over, see me, and then be like, ah, oh, she's doing it wrong like let me go help her and then I'm gonna like freeze because they're gonna come up to me and be like hey you're doing it wrong and then I'm gonna feel like an idiot and then they're gonna be like let me do it. like do, do you need help and then I'm gonna be like no you know I don't know you know it doesn't yeah I, I don't know I've been thinking about this since I got the flat tire I feel like it's like I, I feel like it's like a bigger symptom of like I, I truly kind of feel and I feel like this on its own might be, I don't know. I, I truly feel like I'm like regressing in life um, where it's like, I don't think I struggled this hard in the past with things. Like, I, I mean, I do think I've always like, I would rather do some, do things with other people, but I, I don't think that I, I struggled as hard as I do now. And I don't know why I've regressed and why I feel like my social skills have gone backwards. And, like, don't go, like, telling me, like, oh, it's because you spend too much time on the internet. Or, oh, it's because you work remote. Like, don't, no, go away. But maybe that is true. But but go away. I just, I, tr I truly, I don't know. I do feel like in, in more recent years, like, things have just gotten a lot more difficult for me. And um, I, I, I don't, I, I don't deny that. It's a combination of a lot of things, you know. Um... And my anxiety, I think, I don't know. I'm having too many thoughts. I'm having too many thoughts. I do believe that this is like a combination of a lot of different experiences that I've had. Um, when I got robbed in Mexico, I think that that on its own kind of like made me anxious of just strangers on the like on the road and like in like out in about like that's probably a big factor into this um and then just my insecurities within myself and like also the all or nothing thinking where it's like I feel like I need to be able to confidently know what I'm doing which is dumb because like how do experts become experts they start and then they learn and it's like, if I don't even give myself the opportunity to start and learn, because I just feel like I need to be an expert, like I'll never be an expert and I'll never be an expert ever, you know, like even no matter what, it's just the combination of, of a lot of things. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Being an adult is hard. It's difficult. My social anxiety has gotten really bad. Um, I really need to like bring it up in therapy and like work through this also. But I think my therapist actually ghosted me now that I think about it because I don't know I guess we'll find out but my my appointments with my therapist <laughs> what if she did ghost me bro like that's crazy <laughs> uh, my appointments with my therapist are once a month and they're just like automatically pre-scheduled like indefinitely like they just are on her calendar reoccurring right every month and I think it's been over a month since my last session like I think it's been I don't think it's been a whole month and a half, but it's been over a month for sure since my last session. And I haven't like gotten like my little confirmation, like, like, Oh, you have an appointment tomorrow. And so what if she like took me off her calendar and was like, not nah, F this girl. Cause again, my last, um, appointment that I had, I was like telling, like going off about how like nothing, you know, anyways, it doesn't matter. But yeah. So I don't know. Hopefully I have an appointment coming up. 
and she didn't ghost me, but if she did, oh well, I'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I am having a hard time. I feel like I just need to figure out how to overcome this or like, I need more friends. No, I don't. I need to see. That's my problem is like, I need more, I need more friends or like, I wish my friends were closer. It's like, that's just me depending on these people. And like, no, that's not like, yeah, I feel better. And like, I feel safer when I have a person and like, I appreciate like so much. I appreciate the people that do show up for me, you know? Not saying that people don't. That's not the focus here. The focus is on the people that do. So I appreciate the people that just want to go to Target with me, you know, or like the people that want to go, like, you know, I don't know. It's the little things. It's the little things. I appreciate the people that are willing to spend time with me because I need it. You know, I need that safety net to like feel comfortable, but also two truths can be like, they can both be true. Like at the same time, I also really need to start working on find figuring out why I'm like this and like trying to get the social anxiety. I need to get a lot of things under control, but the social anxiety is just like starting to get a little bit debilitating and it's, 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 it's sad and it's stressful and it's overwhelming and I don't like it. I don't like it at all, but yeah, I just want to share that story because yeah, I got a flat and then I had to go replace and then the, the tire like actually like tore like on the wall. So it was no longer good. It was no longer good. I had to buy a new tire. I bought a used one because I'm poor. So that doesn't matter. Ignore that. Ignore that. But, but yeah, so it was a, it was a, it was a rough story. And then the next day I, I think it was the night before, was it the day before Easter? I think it was the day before Easter. So then the next day, like I woke up and I went and like replaced my tire and then I like just like had to show up to my family's. And then thankfully, like my cousin didn't say anything, but I felt all like embarrassed a little bit that like I called him crying like over something so little, you know, like, yeah. Anyways, that's all. That's all. I just I just wanted to share. I just wanted to tell you guys my, my tire story and then also about the real issue here, which is the social anxiety. But that's all I have. Um, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Why do I feel so blue? Uh, I need a meal like you. Uh, I need some just some friends and some jewelry. I'm trying to get like you. Uh, sign me a deal like you. Uh, for my whip like you. Uh, give me a... I'm trying to be lit like you, uh, flex on the ground like you, uh, show all my bands like you, uh, I talk to my friends, I talk to my family.